today we're going to be talking about how to use the nth term test to try to show whether a series diverges. Now, keep in mind that the nth term test is also called the divergence test, and you'll also hear it called the zero test. It's all the same test, it's just called different things. So you'll see it by different names, just know that it's the same test here. And in this particular video, we're going to be doing three separate examples. I've written three different infinite sums here, and we're going to be using the divergence test to test each one of them for divergence. Now, here's what the divergence test says, and I like to call it the divergence test as opposed to the nth term test or the zero test because it helps remind me that this test is really only good for talking about divergence. It tells us nothing about whether or not a series converges. So here's what the test says. It says that if we take any series, and we'll call it a sub n, and any of these series that we have here can be a sub n, we can call this a sub n here, this natural log of this rational function here could be a sub n, or this quantity here, this series could be a sub n. So any of these series, if we have a series a sub n, and we take its limit as n goes to infinity, if that infinite limit is not equal to zero, if the result of that limit is not equal to zero, then this test tells us that the series diverges. That doesn't mean that if this is equal to zero, that the series converges. It just means that if the limit is equal to zero, that the test is inconclusive. So the test really only can show us whether or not a series diverges. If the limit as n goes to infinity of the series is not equal to zero, then we've proven that the series diverges. But if it is equal to zero, we haven't shown that the series converges, this particular test is just inconclusive. We, we can't get any information from the test, and we would have to use a different test to see whether or not the series converges or diverges. So that's why I like to call it the divergence test, because it helps remind me that we're only making conclusions about divergence, that we can't say anything about whether or not a series is convergent. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example, the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n minus 1 over 3n minus 1. So what we're going to do to use the divergence test to test this series divergence, we're going to say the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, which is in this case n minus 1 over 3n minus 1. We're just going to evaluate this and see what the result is. Now, in this case, it's really easy because we just have a rational function. And remember that when we have a rational function, we can evaluate this infinite limit in one of two ways. We can either look at the coefficients on the largest degree n terms in both the numerator and the denominator. So the largest degree term in the numerator is this n variable right here, this n term. The largest degree term in the denominator is 3n. So we basically have 1n over 3n. And if we look at these coefficients here, then we know that the limit is 1 third. The other way we can do it is by multiplying both numerator and denominator by 1 divided by the largest degree, the highest degree n variable. If we had an n squared anywhere in this rational function, we would have to multiply by 1 over n squared divided by 1 over n squared. But n itself, n to the first power, is the largest degree value of n that we have. So we multiply by 1 over n divided by 1 over n. And what that gives us is n times 1 over n is just 1. Negative 1 times 1 over n is minus 1 over n divided by 3n times 1 over n, the n's cancel and we're just left with 3, minus 1 over n because negative 1 times 1 over n is negative 1 over n. Now if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of this function here, what we'll get is these little fractions, 1 over n, negative 1 over n, these become 0 because when we have a small constant like this, or really any constant, divided by an infinitely large value, that value, that whole fraction itself, goes to zero. And therefore, as you can see, what we're left with is just this one-third value here. So we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of our series a sub n is equal to one-third. Because one-third does not equal zero, the divergence test, by the divergence test, we can conclude that this series a sub n, a sub n, diverges the series diverges. So the divergence test is conclusive because this one-third value is not equal to zero. 
Okay, so that was A sub n. Let's go ahead and call this series B sub n so we can distinguish between them. And we'll call this one C sub n. So if we do another example, if we look at B sub n here, we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n squared plus 1 divided by 2n squared plus 1. Now using limit laws, we can say that this limit is actually the natural log of the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 1 divided by 2n squared plus 1. And from here, we have the same type of rational function that we had in our first example. And what we're going to get is just the coefficients of the highest degree n values. Here we get 1n squared over 2n squared, everything else will cancel, and we're just left with this 1 half, these two coefficients on our n squared terms. The limit as n goes to infinity of 1 half is just 1 half, so we get the natural log of 1 half. This of course is not equal to zero, and therefore by the divergence test, our series B sub n diverges. Now if we look at our third example here, because we have the sum of two separate terms like this, we can break apart each term, put it in its own sum. You can always do that if you have two terms like this added together or subtracted from one another, you can break them apart. So we'll say the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over e to the n plus the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1. Now we can test these separately for divergence. So we'll test this first term here, 1 over e to the n. We'll say the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over e to the n. Well, if we evaluate this at some very, very large number for n, we're going to get some extremely large number, an, an infinitely large number here in the denominator. And we, when we just have a constant divided by an infinitely large number, this is going to go to zero. This is going to be equal to zero. Well, by the divergence test, remember, the divergence test is inconclusive if the limit as n goes to infinity is equal to zero. So the divergence test for this particular term is inconclusive. We would actually have to test it a different way. And what we would find if we wrote out the first several terms of this series is actually that it's a geometric series and we could use the geometric series test to test this for convergence. Let's go ahead and look at the second series here, 1 over n times the quantity n plus 1. We'll say the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n times the quantity n plus 1. One. Again, if we just plug in a very, very large value for n, we'll get an infinitely large value in the denominator. We've got a small constant here in the numerator. This value is also going to tend toward zero. We're just going to get zero for that value. And therefore, the divergence test for this particular series is also inconclusive. The way that we would test it is we'd use partial fractions to break apart this series here. What we'd end up with is 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, which would replace the series we have here. And then if we write out the first several terms of this series, we realize that it's a telescoping series. And treating it as a telescoping series, it becomes very easy to find the sum of this series and, and therefore to conclude that it converges. So that's a couple examples of how we use the divergence test to determine whether or not a series diverges or just to say that the divergence test is inconclusive and use a different test instead.